The more experience you get as a producer, the more you start to realize you do a lot of the same things over and over again. You have your own unique and special process for your production. So why not save some time by cutting out some of the more tedious tasks in that process? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here today. FL Studio gives us the tools to make your own FL Studio templates, cutting out a lot of those tedious tasks so you can straight to work on your next track. Now, there are many different types of templates that you can make in FL Studio. You can make genre-specific templates, so if you know you're gonna be making like a trap beat, you can load up your channel rock with a lot of go-to drums that you like. Or even if you're going for like a more lo-fi feel, you can add a low-pass filter on your drum bus so you can immediately get those lo-fi vibes. You can even set up a mastering template with all of your go-to plugins, sends, mixer presets, and even your mixing chain on your master track. Today, I wanna focus on something a lot more general than all of that. Now, for me personally, I don't always know which kind of genre I'm going to make when I start up a new project. A lot of different things can influence that, so I want one template that does not keep me in one box for genre or mixing or mastering, but a general overall template that makes my life a lot easier for starting any new track that I want. And that's what we're going to go through here today. And I guarantee you that a template like this is going to help you speed up your workflow and get straight into the creativity. So if you do find this helpful or just enjoyed the video, drop a like for me down below. Helps me out a lot. And subscribe for more future content. Now, let's get into FL Studio. So first, opening up FL Studio right here, I've got a template that I've made in the past, but I want to really refine it and make it a little bit better and figure it out, take you guys along for the journey. So in the top left, hitting File, going to New from Template, Minimal, and I always used the empty with four sends. It's literally the exact same thing as empty, but now we've got these four sends over here. So that's where I'm gonna use my jump off point right here, is that template. And over on the channel rock, we've got no sounds on here. There, it's completely empty except for a sampler, which is, does not have any noise. There's literally no sample here. It just needs there to be something there. So what I'm gonna actually do is rename this one Melody. It is still a sampler, but just renamed Melody. Right clicking again and then going towards clone, you'll now see Melody number two. I'm gonna do that a few more times, as many times as you feel like you would need. I'm gonna do five. And because I've gotta look at this every single time I open up a new project, I'm going to be renaming this one, Melody number one, just so it doesn't bug me. All right, cloning it one more time, but now renaming it Drums. And now no matter what kind of genre that I make, I know how many sounds I'm generally gonna want. Although this is not a trap specific template, I'm gonna use that to gauge how many sounds I'm gonna want for my drums. So here, okay, this is like the kick is gonna be the first one. Clone again, that's going to be the snare or clap. Clone is gonna be like an accent snare. Clone hi-hat, open hat, and then maybe one perk and then finally an 808. That's pretty much all that I'll need for a trap beat. And even then, this is a little bit, this is more than I would probably need for a trap beat, but we don't need to use all of them. I'd rather have more here than need to add some later on. I, I can always delete them. And then from there, if you wanted to, you can go over here and clone one more time and then replace this effects if you wanted to, and then add a few more there. Now, generally, I like to use more of the playlist mode when adding effects, but you could definitely do that if you want to have it more like one shots inside of your playlist mode. All right, now the next step of this process is going to be to highlight all the melody, go to the top left over here, group selected, put a name, Melody Beat just fine. And then while keeping everything highlighted, go back to the top left and then hit color selected. I like to do gradients. It just looks better to me personally. And now you can pick any color of the rainbow. Now, personally, I would avoid doing red as that's FL Studio's way to show you that there's a problem with that sound. So I wouldn't use red or brown as they call it. That's It's not brown, but my channel colors are purple and blue. So I'm gonna put this over here. And then the last one, I'm going to do the same color and then darken it a bit, lighten up the first one like that. And that just looks really freaking good to me. Having it be lighter up here and then go down into the darkness, that's really cool. That's really good. All right, going back to unsorted. Now we can highlight all the drums that we have. Do the same process, group selected, drums, okay. And for this gradient, I definitely want to be blue again. Blue, make this be a little bit lighter actually. Now this would bug me, it may not bug you. In fact, I'm probably just being a little bit of a diva about it. The color gradient that you have in the background of the button is going to determine if it's going to be a white font or a black font. All of them are black except for the last one. I don't want that. So I just want to change up this gradient just a little bit more. And I'm telling you, be picky when it comes to this process because you're going to look at it every single time you open up a new project. Back to unsorted and then once again do the same thing for the effects. And it doesn't quite fit my color scheme, but it looks really nice. So I'm going to keep it like that. All right, so now we've got our drums, effects, and melody all right here. Going back to all, we can see that everything in here is all color coordinated. It looks really nice. And now the next step is going to be setting up these sounds over in the mixer over here. So all we have to do is grab this and then start putting these where you want them to be. So what I want is this to be on one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm going to skip down a few and then make this over onto number 11 and then just go down the line for my drums. Lastly, my effects, I want there to be over on like, let's say like 25 or so. I like leaving some mixture tracks in between each group. That way in case if I wanna add some more, if it's like a more heavy project. All right, so now we can see that everything is assigned to a mixer track, which now leads us over to the next stage of this template, which is going to be our mixer. So we only have five melodies right here, but I'm gonna be selecting all nine right here just because again, if I wanna add some more, it's gonna make it a lot more easier. Right clicking number 10 and then hit route to this track only okay so none of these 
are routed to the master itself. It's all going to be onto this bus right here. It's going to make it a lot more easy to add a reverb to every single instrument or add some more creative effects or even some compression to all the melodies. That way you can boost everything and make everything sound more cohesive. If you want to do that, you don't need to, but you can. And I did make a small mistake here. I meant to put this on over on number nine. And that's because I want all of these over here, 11 through let's say 20, just in case we have a few extra ones over there, routing to number 10. And then we can go and rename these two. Melody bus, drum bus. I like these two to be next to each other as opposed to over on number one. That way I can see how loud my drums are in comparison to my melody. And then 25 through 29, let's say, routing to number 24 like that for our effects. All right, so I actually want to do the melody bus alone. Put it as the slate blue right there. Now I'm going to highlight one through eight. Can we not do a gradient on this one? It does not look like you can do a gradient on the mixer track. If you guys want to correct me down below, go for it. But I don't think you can do a gradient on this one. But that's quite all right. I want the same colors we had before, but then like maybe like one down. That would be a clear difference of... uh where the melody bus is compared to everything else. And then over from my drum bus, want that to be blue right there. So we've got our three groups over here. And honestly, for the generic template, that's all that I really want to do here. Once again, because this is a generic template that I don't know what's going to be going on these tracks, whether it's going to be for a boom bap track, lo-fi, hip hop, uh, synth wave, vapor wave. The whole point here is that I don't confine myself and get stuck in a box with a more genre or gore with a more genre or goal-oriented template. Can we change the color? Oh, we can change the color for the master too. I actually didn't even know about that. That's sick. That's actually kind of sick. That looks really nice like this one. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that. As far as the mixer goes, I really just feel like adding the buses for our melody, drums, and even effects just are, are gonna help out a lot when uh, creating new tracks. And the reason why I feel like it's going to really speed up workflow, say for example, if you wanna add some effects over here, like maybe this little blurp. You can immediately put that on over to one of the drums over here and think, wow, it has way too much high end in there and it's already assigned to a mixer track. So you can go over here to number 14, for example, if that's where it was and immediately add an EQ to it. All right, just take out some of that high end over there and then also maybe want some reverb on there. Make it drag out a little bit longer, right? Just maybe like a symbol, Pro R or any other reverb for that matter. And just like that, we're all done. Right, you know, it's as simple as that. We don't need to worry about assigning to a mixer track, finding it over here. It's already going to be assigned with a drum bus even. But I don't want these on our templates. So I'm going to be deleting these for right now. Now, there is one more tip that I can give you when creating your template here. And that's going to be inside of the playlist mode over here. Now, me personally being a YouTuber, I don't want my tracks to start at number one because I can't scroll up. I can frame it better if it's on more like seven. So I'm going to rename seven Melody. So this can be the first one. So I want two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine because that's how many we have over here. We've got more than enough tracks to do that. Right clicking, group with above track, and now they're all going to be a part of the Melody bus right there. Change color. I want a gradient here. We use that one over there. Last one more like this. And now here, actually, I'm going to do it right on track 16. So we've got 10 drums here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Group with the buff track right there. Increase that over there. Go to last. Same one. And then you guessed it right below, adding our effects. There we go. Look at that. Looks so beautiful. And what's really cool over here is if we add different patterns, they're actually going to have the same coloring as where we put them. This is very appealing to me. Once again, being a YouTuber, it just helps me stand out a little bit more. And once again, this is a very generic template, so I don't want to be adding anything else really to the playlist mode. But if you really wanted to, I can go over here, highlight like the first eight bars, go up to the top left corner, go over to time markers, add one, put like intro or whatever. But once again, I feel like that might close you off to some more other opportunities that you could have. When starting a new track, maybe you don't want an eight bar intro or anything like that. So I personally choose to leave that alone. And I do believe it's gonna be all the tips that I've got for the channel rack over here, the mixer, and then the playlist mode over here as well. I just realized I forgot to show you guys how to save this as a template. Going back to file over here, save as like usual, keeping it as an FL Studio song file, FLP. And this process is going to be for Apple over here, but if I can find it, I'll include something for Windows as well. Going to Macintosh HD right here, which for you guys might just be computer, applications, FL Studio 20, contents, resources, FL, data, templates, and then I actually want to add a new folder, user, give it a name and then hit save. Now when opening back up FL Studio, go over here, new from template, and there it is right there. Go to change default template and put the one that we just made right there. And just like that, you're good to go. Guys, don't overlook how helpful it is to be organized when doing music production. I ignored it for the first few years of producing and I've been getting a lot better at it recently. And it really does help with getting to the more creative stuff faster in a more efficient way with less headaches going through every single tedious task. And once again, this was a very generic template. If you guys want in the future, I can definitely make something more or genre oriented like trap beats or lo-fi or even something more mixing and mastering focused as well. If you have your process that you like and you know that works, why not spend a little bit more time here, do it once so you never have to do it again. Save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So if you did enjoy this video, I ask you please drop a like for me down below and subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.